Figuring out how to treat foot and ankle issues can be tricky, and having more than one option is always helpful. Dr. Andrew Carver is the owner of the Shockwave Center and Laser Nail Center in D.C., and he's here to tell us about common foot problems and ankle problems and we how we can help treat them. Thank you for joining us, yeah, Dr. Thank Carver. You for me. There are two major problems. We're going to talk about both of them, but what's, what's the big one? Well, nail fungus, believe it oh. or not, kind of an ugly thing to talk about, but it's actually the most common problem in the human foot. 30% of the foot problems that come in to a podiatrist's office is nail infection, onychomycosis. Wow, and yeah. I'm guessing people don't really want to talk about that in it, conversation. People, people never want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, I had a patient yesterday who had very, a, a fairly young woman, very attractive woman, married, came in with nails that were just uh, half an inch thick and just frightening looking you know, <laughs> a couple months ago. And they look great now. And I mentioned you know, something about, you know, tell your friends, you know, she's so happy. And no one tells their oh. friends that they had fungal nails treated by a laser and it was cured. So uh, it's kind of funny. People don't want to talk about now, it, absolutely. In this age, we can always Google when something doesn't look right on us. I know right. whenever, anytime right. I have something, I'm like, I wonder right. if that's okay. Right. So. After we've Googled and we know what we have, should we go like yourself or go to your GP? What do you, what do you recommend? How's well, the best way to start? a general practitioner is a general practitioner. I mean, this is an age of specialization. Most general practitioners will just say, leave it alone. It's the only infection on the human body that is left alone for sometimes mm. a lifetime. Oh. So um, Get it it's checked very out. very difficult to treat. And now that we have these lasers and other things, which I add a, a whole a few other things to the treatment, um, we can now beat it. Sometimes we can't get a perfect clear nail, but we can get a, a relatively nice looking nail comparatively where you're not embarrassed to wear sandals. That's the, the average person that comes into me said, I haven't worn sandals in 30 years. I'm so embarrassed. I don't like to go to the beach or the pool. Well, let's talk about that treatment. What, right. what are we talking about here? Basically, it's three laser treatments. Okay. I have a no mirror laser, which I think, <clears throat> excuse me, is the laser of choice. It attaches to the nail for about 16 minutes. It's a little uncomfortable. There's a little bit of heat, but it's done three times over two months. And then <clears throat> I basically reduce the nail with a special instrument. Um, I put patient on, patients on a topical, essentially for life, to prevent recurrence. And sometimes I add a mini pulse of the pill, Lamisil, which is the, the pill that everyone's so afraid of. Uh, Why are they afraid of there's it? There's a lot of fear that it causes liver problems, but it's... Uh, but if you're doing the mini pulses, you call it's it... It's very, very safe, and it's it's really, it's a problem in one in a million patients. Wow. So. Okay, so you were tell, telling us about the laser, and you said there's mild pain. There's Scale mild of one pain. to ten, tell us what the pain's like, everyone's because people different. always worry Every, about that. Everyone's different, and some, some patients have no problem with it at all. Some patients feel it's very uncomfortable. Um, the laser connection can be padded a little bit to prevent as much pain, uh, some pain, um, but it, it's not severe pain. I mean, okay. Yeah, most patients tolerate it fine. Excellent. So yeah. that's number one, the number, number one, one prog number problem, one. nail yes. fungus. Yes. Number two is? <clears throat> number two, heel pain. Heel pain, yeah. okay. And that's called plantar fasciitis. Oh, yes, I've heard of this. Almost everybody gets it sometime in their life, believe okay. it or not. Um, we stood up on our back legs very recently as far as evolution <laughs> is concerned. And uh, the plantar fascia gets very taut, tight. Okay. And um, there are some very conservative things to do, um, cushioned arch supports, and I have something called shockwave therapy in my office, which is uh, sound waves. It was a oh. lithotripsy. It was originally used to break up kidney stones, mm -hmm. and we use it to basically s loosen the fascia. And so surgery used to be the big thing for plantar fasciitis, and now we have a lot of conservative things that usually totally, usually totally calms it down. And what is the fascia? Fascia is just a cord across the bottom of the arch, okay. and every time the foot purchases the ground, it extends, okay. and that cord gets taut, like a tug of war sure. back at the heel Brings bone. Brings it back in, okay. So if you put something under the arch to prevent that extension of the foot, pronation it's called, generally it calms down with other, other various treatments such as shock wave or um, sometimes injections of cortisone. A little bit of a massage of for that for that cord, eh? You have to calm <laughs> it down. There's a there's a there's a, a, a kind of a, a very very usually usually the patient stands up in the morning because it swells at night and it's severely painful. That's wow. sort of pathic mnemonic of plantar fasciitis. I, I stand up on it in the morning and 
uh, and you feel can't pain. Stand it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like hiding my feet. I'm wearing four inch pumps right now, and I feel like is that bad? I, I want to know if that's bad. Yeah. Is that bad? You um, know, bunions, hammer toes, such cute all shoes. those things <laughs> don't come from the shoes. Okay. First of all, you know, people, tribes, people get bunions that never wore shoes in their lives, but they're. They're irritated by shoes. So is, is a pump a bad thing? I mean, if you were to wear one all the time and you have pain, maybe you shouldn't. Um, but generally speaking, if you, as long as you mix your shoe wear up a little bit and wear a flat shoe, a comfortable shoe, uh, some of the time, you're okay. So you're telling me to buy more shoes. Dr. Well, Carver, I well, like you a lot. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the new fashion high, I mean, there's a fashion high heel that uh, Nike makes actually has air soles and, and things like that. So the, the, as wide a toe box as you can um, and uh, cushion, the, the more cushion you can put on a shoe, the better. And people who want to find out more can get to you how? <clears throat> uh, through my website. Okay. Yeah, I guess. And you're offering a free consultation right now as well. So if you yes, if yes. you like what just you've heard, just to you. Just oh, no, 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 I, no, I, got, no. I got my free consultation, but now I guess you can't do. <laughs> no, we are we are offering a free consultation. Great. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us and for explaining these things. Thank you for now, having me. You can wear those shoes, ladies. That's okay. But if you're having problems, you now know where to go. More Let's Talk Live is coming up. Stick with us right here.